What's up fellow engineers, I'm Dr McKay and welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. Your subscriptions mean a lot and I'm so excited to see my channel grow and see a lot of good feedback on my comments and my episodes. Thank you all so much. Now in this guide episode, I want to show you pistons and rotors plus timer blocks. I'm going to show you how to set them up and show you a couple of different ways of using them. Now let's get into it. Now as you can see, we have... Oh. Now as you can see, we have obviously the different types of rotors. We have the normal rotor, the advanced rotor, a standard large grid piston, and a timer block. Now, the rotors have different functions. Now one of them has conveyor tubes on and it's one on the and it's one on the bottom as well so items and materials can pass through this piston which is going to be what we're going to be showing you over here so you come over it oh, in my game anyway uh, as you can see I have a cargo container attached to my conveyor tube system going into my conveyor system so refineries and assemblers and whatnot so let's just say we wanted to mine a bunch of ore and we don't have a miner, but we have all the materials that's to say to build rotors, pistons, and drill heads. So, firstly, make sure we have an advanced rotor, which is that one. Place it down. Now we want to name it. Now I can't stress this enough when you make when you're using rotors and pistons, you want to name every single one to what it's doing. Otherwise, you can get very confused very easily. So we find it in it. So I believe it is advanced rotor three. So you know, it gets confusing. So let's just name it. We'll name it drill rotor. And that should theoretically be that one. Advanced row two, so I did the wrong one. So that's wrong. Just hide that one for a minute. Let's type in again. Alright, so that should be the drill row now. I believe. So now we've done that, we want to set a piston on top. Fuel Find the piston. Alright. So one piston there. Now we want to name this one Drill Up. Which is quite easy to name because we just go into the piston's actual control panel. And it will take us straight to the piston itself. So we'll do... Drill Up. Right. And now we want to find the corner conveyor tube, which is in the conveyor sorter system. Place that on there. Add another piston. Let's say this one. Right, and as you can see, we've got one there. Now we need to name this one as well. Now we do this one. Let's just say drill side for easy. You can name it wherever you want, but it's just a demonstration. All right, now you've named that one. You want to stick another conveyor tube to the side, which is this one. Another piston. So it kind of looks like that. This is just a simple one. You could do it as how many pistons and whatnot you want. Just remember to always name them. Let's name this one. Do this one, drill down. All right. So now we need a rotor head, not a rotor head, a drill head. I'm in the 
ground. So if I'm in, if you're in the ground and you need to extend, just go into your up piston and do reverse. And I'll extend all the way up to the maximum distance. And now I should be able to stick it on. Nice. Now, this one should just be called drill. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Now what you could do, which is what I normally do, I normally get like a cockpit or something. Stick it at the bottom of the first piston, or you, or anywhere, as long as it's not touching the top half because of clang. Essentially, the piston won't like being next to a block there. Now, obviously, with the cockpit, this is where you control your rig from. So, your first page is going to be your rotor. So, firstly, we need to set up the rotor. Now, this is the thing that people struggle with. So, you need to find the rotor, which is that one go into the control panel and you want to come down to this section of the control panel you got velocity which is your turn rate your lower limit which is how far it can turn to the lowest point and obviously the same for the highest point and your rotor displacement which kind of raises the rotor up and down for different situations like if you're creating doors and you're your blocks too high on your door frame you can lower the pl the rotor to just underneath or vice versa but on this one we just want to go 90 degrees then not 90 degrees so basically 180 degrees in one direction so with your controller an easy way to do it is hold right bumper and then on your d-pad do left and it does 20 at a time or point 20 whereas if you just use d-pad does one at a time so, point 20, maybe a bit faster, a bit faster. And we want to basically turn 90 degrees, which, or whatever, however far you want. Now I reckon, a bit faster. See where we are with our rotor head. So yeah, see, we've obviously gone past the 90 degrees, but we can still drill from there, so it's easy. So go back in, go to your drill rotor. Now, if you see where it says current angle is 260, sometimes it gets a bit confusing, so you might have to fiddle around with it. But I think that might be the lower limit, it depends which way I've moved it. So let's just put this one down to 260, which I'm using the right bumper. And then we basically go back to velocity. Now, see, it's not working. So try putting this one down to 260. Oh, now it's locked. Now, now it's might have sawn itself out, so now we can check to see where we are. So we're basically like 100 degrees, minus 100 degrees. So, so we set this one to minus 100 degrees. Now that's just me holding the D-pad then to go faster. All right. Did I break it? Probably broke it. All right. Let's just do that a sec. Speed it up. And see where it takes us. Should stop us somewhere around here. All right. So, this is where it gets complicated because you're messing around with it and now it doesn't know what, what it wants to do so now we want to go there so that's now in the plus Ooh. so we want to kind of go there you go let's do 70 
Why won't it let me do that? Oh yeah. I see, because of my ladder, look. So let's just move me ladder. And we'll see. Now it should turn all the way around. There you go. So we'll go back to your rotor. So you start off with the first thing on your grid, and you work your way up. So we can still go a little bit more, I reckon. So we just put it up to 90 degrees. And then once you've done that, then you want to set how fast you want to go. Because now, if you press reverse, it'll go however fast you want in the direction. And it will always stop at the angles you set. So now, I reckon 0.60, maybe a bit too fast for mining. I reckon minus 40 or 40, because when you reverse it, it'll go back the other way. So that is what you want. But you kind of want to stop it in the middle for a second, which would be there. So that's zero. So just remember, it's the velocity is zero for a second, because this is where it gets a bit complicated. If you're doing a setup like this, you want to be able to control the speed yourself, right? instead of having it doing it automatically. So you, in your toolbar, let's just say, you want, let's just ho hold down the right on the D-pad and it comes up with this. Find your advanced rotor. Uh, which is now confusing because they're both called drill rotor. Two seconds. Right, now with a cool drill rotor one, we should be able to determine which one it is. So hold down right on the D-pad. Find the drill rotor one, which is that one. Then you want, now click on it and it'll come up with a list. Now, you all, if you come all the way down to the bottom, it says increase velocity. So you click on that. Then on your left side, you want to decrease the velocity. And then on the top, you want to maybe do reverse. And now that will basically do whatever you want. So you can manually control it. And it's set up for all Mac as well. Well, semi all Mac. You'll see in a minute. Now we've done that, we want to go to the piston. So we want drill up, which is that one. Now that's set to the max, maximum distance. Now we want to reverse it all the way down. Because be it going up doesn't really doesn't really matter for the minute. It only helps if you want to put multiple pistons on going down. So you have say two lengths of down for the uh, including the up. If you understand what I mean by that. So basically that's as far as it goes. So we just leave that there for a minute. Go to the next toolbar page. We want to do piston side. And we want to go down to maximum distance. And this is how I normally do it. Set set zero. And obviously uh, keep your velocity as it is. Now obviously in this toolbar, you want to have on the up on the D-pad. Drill down, drill side. Have it to right. So on the up D-pad, you want to go to the side and you want to do increase maximum distance. And on the bottom, you want to decrease the maximum distance, which is that one. And obviously, with your right being reverse, I'll show you that. Or your left, doesn't really matter. So right being reverse. When you click reverse and you press up, it should extend it. There you go. So it extends it one, then two, then three. Obviously all the way out to one. And then obviously to bring it back, you just hold press down and then reverse it. Cool. Right, now we want the next one, which is the down piston. Find that one, drill down, click on it. Kind of want to do the same thing. So you do, or you could do it another way, but you can set it this way first. So it's the increase. Oop. 
decrease. Reverse. And then... Is there another one you can stick on there? For, the, for how this is going to work. So on your left, you have to then place your drill. So you don't go to block, you want to go to normal, and then you want to have it toggle block on and off. So it's on, and it's off. Now, if you're using experimental mode, you can do enable share ner nurse attention, which is this, and it should stabilize the drill rig. So obviously the more pistons you have, the more wobbly it will be. See, no wobble really. So now we want to test it out. So you want to turn your drill on. Let's just go out the maximum distance. So 10 meters with the side piston. As you see, I changed the uh, tool, tool bar. And see the drill spinning. Now, if you go to here, and you come down here, we're gathering stone, going straight into the refinery. Now, if you've watched my previous video on conveyor systems, you, this is how it's working. It's going straight into the cargo container, which is that one. And as it is, it's going straight into the basic refinery, and then it should be pulled straight into where it's going. So now we're at maximum distance. We can either do one or two things. We could spin. Now that's going way too quick. How fast is that spinning, I wonder? Let's have a look at our rotor. Drill rotor. Now let's just... Let's check see how fast that is going. That looks like it's going quick. It's 3 RPM. Damn, that's quick. So we may have to check that one. So... That was increased, yeah? I'm pretty sure. And the other one decrease. And it goes by three. No, I don't like that. So let's do it manually here. Like Always about right. Don't not take Fuel critical. Have a look. There you go. Now we're digging, but it's still going a bit quick. Now we want to go down, so it's the end panel, and then just decrease it to zero. Then do one meter, and go down, and then you go back again, and then basically you clear as you go. So essentially, reverse it. It's still too quick. I don't like how quick it's going. So maybe you might have to tweak it manually. So let's just change down the velocity because it's 260. I wonder if that tree is stopping us from moving. I believe it was. So now obviously, now your drill rig is set up and you've basically set up all your pistons and stuff and you've named them. Now we can use a timer block to do it automatically. So as you can see, it's just going doing its own thing, all right? But if you want to leave it to do its own thing without actually being in the cockpit, this is where it gets a bit complicated, but also a bit fun. And where it... 
and this is where it gets a bit like fun, complicated, and quite interesting. So you find your time block. So this is your time block, big square thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It could be anywhere on the base. So just just put it there for a sec. All right. Now, as you can see, our drill rig is stationary and it's not moving. So we come in it. Now so we've got another time block. So let's just do the first time block a sec. Go down to instant. So basically, set the delay to zero. Go to setup actions. Now, what do we want? We want the rotor to spin. But firstly, we want it to go down a meter, don't we? So if we go to in to our grids, find drill down, click on it. And then if you find increase maximum distance by one, and then drill rotor one, do reverse. Yeah? Seems simple enough. All right? But then you want to do timer block. Well, not that one. Time of block two. Start. Which, when you set up that one, so that's ten seconds. So we kind of need to time. We need to time it, don't we? So firstly, let's just place a switch down, so we can toggle this time of block. And we could time it as we're doing it. So one time block, start, go. One, two, three, we seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. So fifty seconds. So now we come just go into the control panel. Remember fifty seconds. Go to time block two. Start. See if we can get 50 seconds. Should be able to. So we set up 51 seconds to be safe. Then you do set up your actions. Now, kind of the same thing as the first one. We want the drill rotor to go down. So, increase maximum distance. And then, drill rotor to go in reverse. Yeah, simple. And then you want to then set up your first time block again. Start. Yeah. So let's just see if it works. It's gone down again. Now I should do, should do a continuous sweep until that down piston is fully extended. So we're almost to the end, and it should switch on the other time block, and it should then go back the other way, if I've done it right. And there we go, it's gone down. Ah, I think I know what I've done. It toggled the last time block, but the other time block's not set to 50 seconds, is it? It's set to almost instantly. So, what we need to do is we need another time block, To be the middle, the middleman, as you say. So when we set it up, so time block three. Now you could name time blocks as well, otherwise it gets a bit confusing. And we want to set these actions up for 50 seconds as well. But you want this one to trigger the first timer block that one but we want to go back to time block 2 and use your analog stick to go down to the bottom get rid of this time block number one and put time block number three so basically now what would happen essentially is when the first one's finished it activates time block number two which then waits then it waits 50 seconds and then it activates, should activate, 
Let's test it. Go now, it's going back, <laughs> which is that block now. Now, if I've done it right, it should go back again the other way. See, it's only not right. So it does take a bit of tweaking. Oh, no. It was just timed. So it is working. Just timed it a bit wrong. So there you have it, that is how you set up time blocks, now time blocks can be used for multiple different things, you know, an automatic miner, um, opening doors, just, just having like a bunch of different grids on different things to open things, if that made any sense. Like, in one of my, in one of my games I have a, ta a launch tower for rockets, and I have basically two fuel connectors on pistons and rotors that attach to the rocket. I have a timer block set up to basically move basically the rotors and the pistons to the rocket connect and then uh, then press the button again and it brings them back so it's not like an automatic thing it's manually pressing the button but the timer block does it all so as you can see it just keeps on going so that's good so i think we've covered what i wanted to talk about pistons and rotors you've seen how i've set them up and you can basically set them up however you want just remember to always name each or one of the pistons so you know what they're doing because you can have like 20 in different angles and you're like right now which one's which now you could go to each individual one and set them up but then when you sat in a cockpit or a control panel how, how are you going to know so obviously to make this like drilling rig a bit better you could literally set up another timer block once you've figured out how you've got to do a lot of calculation once you figure out how long it takes for the down piston to fully extend then you have another timer block set up for it to fully retract if you can right so it should work to fully retract and then set it to have the piston come back in say two meters and then start it all over again so so you'll have a ton of timer blocks but it should work out right now, someone requested that I show them, well, I do a little bit of a guide video on how to change the ownership of the grids. So, let's just have a look. Who owns this grid? Well, me. I own it. So, if you look over to the far right, it says owner me. Now, to if you had another player, or you wanted to have it open to multiple people that's not in your faction, yeah, if you wanted to have it open to multiple people that aren't in your faction, you come down to share block with share rule. And that means anyone who joins your game can have access to your blocks or your grids. Right? But if you wanted to say transfer the ownership, so if you blueprint someone in and it says ownership of yada yada, or you say, I don't know, hack a pirate drone, or you blueprint a pirate drone that says faction pirates, you come here to, to where it says transfer to. Click on it and it comes up with all of the different stuff factions and players which is obviously a friend I play with here but I don't know if it gives you yourself unless you make create a faction I'm not sure because my name is not here so just be careful when you do that so if you wanted to transfer it not to that one to transfer it to say H, my friend H3 click on it and it will be his not mine so that's how you share and transfer blocks but just be careful and if you go to info 
if you look down at the bottom left, it does say convert ship, convert to ship. Now sometimes when you build something and blueprint it in, like a ship, but you get in your ship and you're trying to take off and nothing's happening, it's not flying, right? Come here and check that. If it says convert to ship, it means that the ship you've blueprinted in is technically being shown as a station and stations cannot fly. So if you click convert to ship, it will basically make the vehicle fly, essentially that. But don't do it if you if you read, it says you can convert any station into a ship, be careful that it's not embedded in any train as it might explode. So if it's in the train, don't do it unless you want a big explosion, essentially. Yeah, and in this panel, you can name the grid. So if you wanted to name your ship and it appeared, instead of being static grid in your whatever, you can name the actual grid itself. So I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover and as you can see the pistons and rotor is still working. Now obviously that is an advanced rotor and that allows components and materials to pass through. <clears throat> but you do have one that's not got conveyor tubes on. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, and another thing, if you wanted to try, and, if you wanted to put small grid on large grid, and I did cover this in a previous video, you literally just whip off the top, and then you go to a control panel, which I can access from here. Find the rotor, come down, and it says add small head, which will put a little head on. Put it up, boom. And then you can literally do exactly the same mining wise with small grid with the time blocks as well. So, so if you wanted to do the same, but ideally you can't. If you could do it with like stuff that's not drilling or using the conveyor system, uh, but you can do it on the advanced rotor. But you have to kind of get a bit creative with your conveyor tubes. I'll quickly show you just to show you how you can uh, access the grids so wrong one I got rid of it in my so it goes show all. so you had a small head but it's kind of still a big conveyor tube thing just, so it's kind of like a big one so obviously the small little pistons kind of won't connect to the conveyor tube so what you would do is you come to the conveyor tube and get this one which has big and small on it now I don't know if there's a smaller one I don't think so so line them up which Fuel is that way I think. yep and then you get your small small ones which is that one and then your piston which now uses the conveyor tubes so you can do whatever you like and obviously if you want me to do a bit on rotors and doors making like the the, ro the door out of rotors and blast door blocks please leave a comment down below and I'll do a video on that shortly it'll be a quick, quicker video than this one because it's actually quite easy so um, if you like the video and you find it helpful and you learned something new please leave me a like don't forget to comment any of your thoughts I'm I love all the feedback that my viewers give me I, it makes my channel so much more better and if you haven't yet please subscribe I'm really happy that my channel is growing as it is and the more subscribers the better thank you for watching I've been Dr McKay and as always happy building I'll catch you next time cheers